Bliss Podcast, episode 8. Almost Bliss episode 9 there. So we're going to be talking about veganism in this episode. I'm your host, Maitreya Rishi Dasa, here with Dear Purijit Prabhu. And um, if you don't know, if you're not well informed, veganism is a um, kind of a, a new movement um, that started in the wake of uh, a lot of animal killing that goes on, animal cruelty more specifically, um, especially in places like the United States, where there's massive farms where they uh, they kill chickens and cows en masse um, in the millions there. And uh, the ways in which it's done are very inhumane and uh, factory-like. And um, so uh, the vegans, the vegan movement, they I've seen some videos some propaganda, but they go out onto the streets and they have uh, these big TV screens. I don't know if you've seen this. Mm-hmm. They have these TV screens where they show this uh, brutal footage and they kind of like try to, I would, I would go as far as to say brainwash people, but uh, <laughs> it's like a kind of like a good brainwash in a way. Um, that uh, This is like a, a thing that's going on. It's horrible. They're trying to convince people. So they're doing some preaching there about animal cruelty and uh, their idea is to change the diet, that um, you don't need meat to survive. You can get on just nicely from fruits and vegetables. And, uh, but this is, it's similar to vegetarianism, but the big difference is that they don't say, uh, they say no animal products at all. So vegetarianism is fruits, vegetables like that, but also milk products. So um, veganism, they say no milk products, they say no honey, they say nothing from an animal at all. So um, you could say it's kind of a, a more extreme, a very extreme vegetarianism. Mm-hmm. So it's growing in popularity. Uh, our Ramachandra Prabhu, he told me that in Israel, it's like 19% or something of the population are vegans. Really? Yeah, it's pretty huge there. So um, it's getting to be pretty big in the world it's kind of like a, a in terms of morality um it's like a big thing and also in terms of health some people are concerned that it's uh, a good for health so anyway that is going on so i thought uh, in this podcast we'd discuss the krishna conscious viewpoint on veganism so dear prabhu are the Hare krishnas vegan because um we've seen that uh, some of the Hare krishnas uh, they kind of propagate this idea of veganism. So I'm sure some people are wondering, are Hare Krishna's vegan? Is that part of the spiritual practice? Well, Hare Krishna's are not anything. They're, they're, they don't have any designation. Hare Krishna's, um, this um, term Hare Krishna's refers to a, a, a person who is serving Krishna. So, Everyone in this world is serving Krishna, if not directly, just like we do, uh, through chanting and hearing about Krishna. Um, they also serve Krishna indirectly through his um, inferior potency, Maya, or the material energy. Just like this body is consists of material energy. So if someone is not serving Krishna, um, then he's serving his body, his senses, his tongue, his belly, his genital, like that. So in this way, everyone is engaged in um, service to Krishna. So everyone is a Hare Krishna. Some some know, some do not know. So um, coming back to your questions, are the Hare Krishnas vegans? Yes, they're also Hare Krishnas. Hmm. Everyone. Those people who are... Um, designating themselves as vegans and they're also eternal devotees of krishna hmm. that's a very interesting way of answering <laughs> i appreciate that but more specifically are those who are practicing krishna consciousness actively chanting on the beads uh following the principles like that are they are they uh practicing veganism um well, I don't know any any devotees like that personally, but I have seen that um, some devotees they they uh, refrain from consuming milk f- 
for the same reasons as the the vegan uh, people uh, also refrain. So I'm sure there are many like that. Yeah. Okay, I see. And um, now, as a vegan, um, they would say uh, milk isn't necessary. But uh, I think we have an understanding that that might be not quite the case. So, what is the Hare Krishna viewpoint on the necessity of milk? Well, nothing is necessary. Ultimately, um, you are the soul. The soul is not the body. So, um, soul, according to Bhagavad Gita, is eternal. Just like uh, Krishna says, Dehi no sminyata dehi, komanam yuvanam jara, tata dehantara prapti, diras tutrana muhyati. It means that as you had the body of a small child in the past, then you had the body of a youth. Now we have a grown-up body. Similarly, you will have a body of an old of an old man. But although your body is uh, changed so many times throughout your lifetime, you are not changed. You are observing of all, the, all these changes. So you are the soul. You are eternal. There is no birth. There is no death for the soul. We are the soul. We are spiritual. We are not the body. So um. Um, um, the soul doesn't need anything. The body needs uh, meat or food or milk, or the, but the soul doesn't need anything. And what does the soul need, Prabhu? Nothing. The soul <laughs> needs nothing. That is that is the um, um, nothing material. That is that is the. Uh, the real freedom, when you understand, I am spirit soul, I don't need anything. So, of course, there's a spiritual need of the soul to unite with um, Krishna, with the reservoir of all pleasure, with the Supreme Personality, with the Godhead, um, through through service. So, that's what the Jiva needs. But otherwise, um, the if it was so, if you actually uh, needed milk or or food or meat or anything, then let's say a person dies, then you just supply him some milk or meat or food and make him alive again. Is that possible? No, it is not possible. He's dead forever. So um, that means that the, the food is not the required for, for life. It is the soul that enters the body that makes the body living. Just like you have clothing, let's say, and when I put on the clothing, then the clothing is moving, right? But if I say that um, I need the clothes, otherwise I cannot move, well, I can move even I'm naked, right? So similarly, the soul is living even without the body. You see? Same example, you know, you change the body from a child to youth, to adult, uh, these are like different dresses. That's another shloka in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna compares the body to the dress. So you might have different dresses, but you're still the same person. So uh, it is not because of the dress that you know we're we're moving, we're living. It's because of uh, the person. Similarly, it's not because of the body we're living. It's because of the soul. So the food is required for the body, to maintain the body, not the soul. And you are the soul. So this Krishna consciousness movement is um, an educational movement to, to uh, teach people about their true spiritual identity that is transcendental. See, on these mundane level, in the bodily platform, there are so many conflicts. Blacks against the whites, the whites against the blacks, the uh, men against women, children against uh, parents and so many. So this is another designation, uh, vegans and vegetarians and meat eaters and so on, so on. So Krishna consciousness movement is, is beyond this. It's for everyone, it's universal. But you say no designations, but aren't the Hare Krishnas vegetarian? Um, no, we're not vegetarian. But you, but you have these nice big vegetarian um, feasts. This is like a big part of the, the thing. Now I've seen so many advertisements. Um, no, this is not vegetarian food. This is um, food that is offered to Krishna. So uh, 
um, food that is offered to Krishna is um, transcendental. Just like you are transcendental as the soul, similarly, the food stuff that is offered to Krishna is transcendental or spiritual. Spiritual food? Yes. How, how is that? Well, because it's offered to Krishna, um, it revives... Because ultimately everything, as I said in the beginning, we either serving Krishna or His energy, the material energy. So if that material energy um, is used in the service of Krishna, then it turns into spiritual energy. So um, what seemingly seems like a material foodstuff, uh, if it is um, cooked and offered to Krishna, it becomes spiritualized. And by taking that spiritualized food, what we call Krishna Prasadam, one also revives his um, spiritual identity or uh, spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Wait, what was that word you mentioned there? Prasadam? Prasadam, yes. What is that? Prasadam, the word prasadam means mercy. It's uh -huh. mercy of Krishna. Ultimately, everything is the mercy of Krishna in this world. Even the meats is also prasadam. Because without Krishna, without Krishna's energy, you wouldn't be able to eat the animals. The animals are eating grains, right? So how do the grains uh, manifest in this world? Through rains, right? And rains are supplied by Krishna, not by you. So Krishna sends the rains, then the grains grow, that is eaten by the animals, then you kill the animals, you eat the animals. Uh, in this way, it is also sent by Krishna. So to appreciate that uh, oh, this is f from Krishna, this is from God, whatever I'm eating is from God, this is the beginning of spiritual life. So even, I know that in Christianity, right, you from Christian background, um, the Christian people, they uh, have a prayer before eating, and they thank God, oh, thank you God for giving us this food, this meal, this daily bread, like that, right? right. So this is very good. Because we're acknowledging that you know, God has given us something. So at least we're acknowledging. But we can take it a step further. And instead of just acknowledging, oh, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much, uh, we can offer in return to God. So um, this is the philosophy behind mm -hmm. prasadam. We offer to Krishna, we cook for Krishna with love and devotion, just like you cook for your beloved um, then we offer him that food stuff according to the ancient uh, rules and regulations from the ancient scriptures, the Vedas. And then Krishna actually eats that offering. And then after he eats, uh, he leaves for us also uh, so we can eat the remnants of his uh, food stuff. So this is prasadam basically means um, uh, food of God. And um, if we distribute also that food of God, that is the greatest uh, welfare activity for all living entities. Just to clarify something you said, did yeah. you say that your God, Krishna, he lets meat eating go on? Um, yes, just like he lets so many things go on. Uh, because God... Well, what is your understanding of God, first of all, if I ask you? Well, God, he's like, he's like all good, man. He doesn't like, he doesn't let bad things happen, man. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let. Yeah. God okay. So kill. we have a different idea of God. Um, for us, the Krishna conscious devotees, God is transcendental. In other words, he's beyond good or bad, because these ideas, good or bad. Very relative, very relative. Just like, for example, for the animal, uh, for you, let's say someone who eats meat, for him, a nice steak or a chicken is very good. Right? He likes the taste, he likes to, um, it's part of his culture, he goes with friends to a restaurant and enjoy and eats and it's very nice. Huh? So that is good. But for the animals, is that good? Not really. 
is the worst. Is the worst. Is the death personified. See, the butcher comes. Is the death personified. So um, uh, this is relative. What is good? What is bad? And we can't uh, subject God to our relative uh, terminology. So is God good or bad? I'm kind of confused. He is none of these things. These are simply um, our illusions. What is good? What is bad? Because it relates to a certain uh, condition. Certain set of circumstances. Our values of good and bad. Mm -hmm. So God is beyond this. So what is absolute good then? The absolute good is... Um, is is to serve Krishna, serve God. Uh -huh. And this service is like including offering the food. That's just, that's like including the service. That is very practical and very um, uh, easy service. You can render to God immediately. Uh -huh. Instead of going to church and talking about so many things, just offer God something to eat. Very simple um, expression of your love. To God. Okay. Now this makes sense because I saw a book on the www.imbliss. Uh, sorry, expandthebliss.com website. How to offer your food to Krishna. So that is that like a compilation showing us how we can actually render this service? Yes. Wow. Cool. That is yeah. That is a, a um a little bit more minute detailed description of how everyone can start offering their foods to Krishna. Okay. So even like other religions, they can also like reach perfection. They can like love, learn how to love God also. Yes, and you will see how your life changes, how how much fun it is. Right? You yourself have an experience of cooking for Krishna, offering. It is an amazing activity. It is a very simple activity, but it so much uh, spiritualizes your life. So uh, we would like to encourage everyone to try it out. This is a very, very uh, pleasant meditational process. Instead of, you know, sitting in a corner and thinking of nothing, which is impossible, why don't you spiritualize your eating? Why don't you make your eating a, a spiritual activity? And also, it is a very um, uh, sociable activity because when you cook, then you can distribute to your friends and you don't have to tell them about God and Krishna and so many things if you if they're not willing to hear um, but you can give them nice Krishna Prasadam e even without them knowing and they will get the spiritual benefit this is most amazing wow. so um, yeah that uh, book is there everyone can download and read okay cool so um, another question is uh, I know that the Hare Krishnas, they do like to offer milk to Krishna though, right? No. You really? No, a devotee not, never offers anything out of sense gratification. Mm -hmm. Srila Rupa Goswami, he says, Anya bilasita shunyam jnana karmadi anuvritam anukulena krishna nushilana bhakti rutama. This means that this pure love of God, Krishna consciousness, uh, is unmotivated in this world you know we only know the motivated love so the man he loves the woman because he wants to enjoy his sense gratification the woman loves the man because the man takes care of her and buys her something or whatever whatever the f father loves the son because he wants the son to be um, according to his liking the son loves the father because the father gives him money and you know this conditional love but love of Krishna, love of God is different. There should be zero material motive. So when while we're cooking, we're not meditating on our own pleasure. That oh, I'm going to offer this milk or I'm going to offer this or that or that to Krishna. We're meditating on Krishna's pleasure. You see? So in this way, by the simple process of cooking for Krishna, uh, we can achieve the highest the most pure love of Godhead. Simply by this, simp you know, by by meditating like this, that uh, I should not think of my pleasure; I should think of Krishna's pleasure. 
Okay, wow. Well. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna meditate on that a little bit. Yeah. And I think we're gonna take a little break. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome back to the Bliss Podcast, episode 8. So, we've been talking about veganism, the Krishna's, uh, uh, the Hare Krishna's viewpoint on veganism, where they stand, what they eat, how they offer, how they try to love God. So, um, we were discussing offering food to God, the process of that, the process of this uh, very nice service, the spiritualization of foodstuffs. And if you would like to learn more about this subject matter and how to do it yourself, you can find more about the book that I mentioned before, How to Offer Food to Krishna, on www.expandthebliss.com. That's our uh, Bhaktivedanta Lives and Sound Society website. You can also get in touch with us on all our social medias. Uh, that's Expand the Bliss on Instagram, uh, the Bhaktivedanta Lives and Sound Society on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's not back to Bhaktivedanta, it's Expand the Bliss on Facebook, huh? Yeah. Ah, okay, Expand the Bliss on Facebook. The Bhaktivedanta Lives in Sound Society on Patreon. Very sorry. Please uh, give a little donation on Patreon. It's not so much. $5 a month, come on. You can help us out so much. We can do so many nice projects. You can all learn so much about Krishna consciousness if you have a little, just a little support from your heart. So, uh, and then also... Um, we also have uh, this, yeah, Twitter, Twitter. Expand the bliss on Twitter. So if you're more of a, a tweeter, then you can uh, hit us up on there also. Also, you can send us feedback, questions, criticism, challenges, whatever you feel on the email address. Krishna. Or just plain insults. <laughs> well, yeah, whatever from your heart. Krishna bliss at outlook.com. So uh, we appreciate uh, any kind of communication. Thank you very much. So, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention also, um, some more things you can find on the Expand the Bliss website. Uh, you can find nice articles by all the Prabhus here. There's lots of, uh, lots of um, in-depth inf- uh, explanations and information about this uh, very deep and complex philosophy. You can hear all the Prabhus viewpoints and realizations and, and, and uh, uh, cool takes on the philosophy there. And... Um, yeah, and also, I would say my favorite section of the website, the PDFs. There's there's very nice ebooks there. The ebook section of the website, you can find such nice books as Teachings of Lord Buddha, How to Offer Your Food to Krishna, uh, and some other nectarian works there, uh, compiled by dear Purujit Prabhu. So, uh, and also uh, one of my personal favorites, Proof of the Vedas. It's on there. It's a very it's a very interesting read. Also, Makanchur. Ah, book. yeah, Dimakanchur Prabhu also has some books on there. Okay, wonderful. So, back to veganism. Now, uh, what were we saying? Ah, yes, that we don't like to offer Krishna anything. But isn't it a fact that Krishna, he likes milk? Yes. Okay, now, wh- why, why, why Krishna likes milk? Why not? Why? why? Why not? Krishna can like whatever he wants. Like you, you have your preferences, right? You have things you like, you have things you don't like. So Krishna also has his likes and dislikes. So one of his names is Govinda. Govinda is one who gives pleasure to the cows. That is his occupation. Krishna, although he is the Supreme Godhead, has his personality. So um, in this transcendental personality, he is uh, um, herding his cows, and um, uh, you know that's why the name Govinda. But Krishna is like working there, or what? You said occupation. Yeah. He what? God works. God works. Yeah. What? How is it? Well, he works. He just works. He's he's um going to the pasturing ground and. Uh, Sometimes he might even milk the cow wow. like that. He's taking care of cows. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is not understandable from our materialistic point of view because for us work means uh, a, you know a suffering. Mm. You're going to work. You, everything is by force. But in the spiritual world, um, everything that is done is done on the spiritual platform. In other words, there's no suffering. Just like sometimes, 
you work, but you're not obliged to work. Like you have some hobby, right? So that you do for pleasure. Although it might be, uh, it might look like work, ordinarily it is for your pleasure. So in the spiritual world, everything is for pleasure. All activity is for pleasure. There's no um, uh, material impediment in that work. Huh. It, you know, people think that uh, um, there is nothing. Ultimately, there is nothing. The transcendence means nothing, nothingness. So we don't think so. We Krishna conscious devotees, we have a different uh, viewpoint. We think that is everything. After, after we transcend this material realm, the real fun begins. So there's activity, there are pastimes, there are personalities, there are likes, dislikes, there's eating, there's dancing, everything, but not limited like here in this world. In other words, the spiritual world um, is full of unlimited varieties of pleasures with Krishna in the center. Uh, how you know that though? Because this is, we're talking about the transcendence, so... Mm -hmm. How do you know such detail about the transcendence? Well, we, we this knowledge has been revealed to us through the Vedic literatures and uh, the uh, uh, Vedic scriptures have been given to us, translated and and um, um, interpreted by our spiritual master, uh, Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Okay, so... That gives you information about all this, the spiritual world. Yes, and, all that. Okay. and I highly recommend that people um, read these books of our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, because it gives you um, a different uh, viewpoint, the transcendental viewpoint of reality that is that has not been given anywhere else. Even in religious uh, literature, such information was never given before. What is the name of God? What is the form of God? What is God doing? How God is um, enjoying? See, very important information. If the aim of religion is to love God, then we should love Him practically, not just speaking, but we should render service to Him. And service means to satisfy the, the, uh, the desire of uh, the person who is served. So God also has desires, but these desires are transcendental, but nevertheless, they are desires. So um, this is how we know, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, whether you believe it or not, that's another thing, you know, but um, because you asked that question, I'm obliged to respond. I'm, I'm not obliged to, resp to now prove everything to you, like every single point, that why, why should I be obliged to prove it to you? That's fair enough. I might say also to you that you were a cheater. Now you're asking me this question for, you know, with some ulterior purpose. And now you prove that you're honest. That's kind of a nonsense conversation, right? Mm. That you ask me something and I say, well, you first of all, I have to prove uh, to, to, to me that you're an honest person. You're not a thief. You're not a pedophile. You're not a murderer. And so on and so on. That is not very respectful conversation, mm. right? Before... You actually speak, I already have a preconceived idea that you are a cheater, you are nonsense, and so on, so on. That's not a very open-minded discussion. Right, okay. You see? So, first of all, we ask um, all the nice and open-minded people to kindly hear what this philosophy is about before making a judgment. We don't say you don't make a judgment. Judgment is um, uh, the function of a very intelligent person. We must make, make some judgment. We should not accept things you know, blindly. We should judge. We should uh, have some discrimination. This is nonsense. This is sense. This is scientific. This is bogus. Like that. But before hearing the actual philosophy of the Krishna consciousness movement and making a judgment, no, this is not very good. This is uh, compared to uh, um, like an animal. And a dog is barking, right? When some stranger comes, a dog is, bark a dog is barking. That is his reaction. So we should not bark like dogs, but we should sit down, intelligent persons, and give um, uh, oral reception to the person. 
who we're dealing with. Although he might not be uh, according to our liking or uh, might be something new to our viewpoint, we should um, give uh, him a chance to express his um, viewpoint. This is very much missing in our society. It's just common, basic, uh, polite dealings. Everyone is trying to bark his philosophy and then there's another person who's also barking and there's lots of barking but no hearing. So that is why the Vedas are called Shruti. Shruti means that it's understood by hearing. There is no other uh, way how we can understand what are the Vedas uh, simply by hearing. Uh, things that are inconceivable to you. I, I mean, how can you uh, uh, conceive of something that is beyond your perception? Beyond your sensual perception. How can you conceive of it? You cannot. But does it mean that things that uh, you cannot conceive by your senses do not exist? If I ask you. I would have to say, well, no. Yeah, that, that is a you know, nonsense uh, argument. Just because I cannot see it, that, that is the proof that it doesn't exist. So, um, things exist that you cannot perceive by your senses. And there is a way how you can actually understand them, even without perceiving them by your senses. And that is through the process of hearing. Anything that you do not know, you hear by, so you learn by hearing. So in the same way, uh, we can learn about God through hearing. How do you know you're going to hear the right thing though? Because you might hear some nonsense. Mm -hmm. So how do you know you're hearing from the right source? Well, as I said, uh, that might be so, might be some bogus information, but provided the person uh, is bona fide, that channel is bona fide, you can get the right full information, the right correct information. Mm -hmm. but we're, just, we're discussing the process, okay? Whether the information is correct, whether the channel is correct, that is another debate. That is another topic, also a very difficult and complicated topic. But first of all, um, I just wanted to explain the, the process, that the process is bona fide. People think that is not bona fide. We should not hear, we should experience everything ourselves. They have this understanding, generally, in modern times. So that is a nonsense proposition. The process, although it might be misused, the process is not itself uh, uh, deceiving or, or uh, faulty. If the uh, person is honest and he gives the, the correct information, the process works. Now you said that you can sit down and hear about the Hare Krishnas, and you should you should learn about the Hare Krishnas before yes. he makes a judgment. But yes. but you you Hare Krishnas are out there on the street, and you're imposing your philosophy on us. I don't think that's very good. You shouldn't impose. Why not? Well, because that's well, I have my thing, and you have your thing, and that's okay. You know, if I want to go to yours, and that's okay. But you shouldn't you shouldn't be out there bugging people. Why should we not bug? Are you bugging us also? No, I don't tell you about Oh, that there's so many advertisements. Just like you go on YouTube. This is going to be on YouTube, right? Right. There's so many advertisements there. Yeah, this is going to be like on the, the Living in Bliss channel on, on YouTube. and uh, Sorry, the Expand the Bliss channel on YouTube. And I think there's even like another channel that you can find that's to do with the Bhaktivedanta Lives in Sound Society. It's like the Kick on the Face channel or something like that. I think it's Kick on the Face, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So like people can go on YouTube and they can like, Check out all the videos we have there, like the classes and, and the podcasts and the yeah. philosophy videos and yeah. stuff. Wow, cool. Okay, cool. So you have so many advertisements and it's bugging you. Every, I, somewhere I read that uh, an average person in the Western world, he is subjected to 500 um, adver advertisements, commercials every day. 500. Wow. That's That's in, that is insane. So if we go, I mean, certainly you don't have 500 Hare Krishna advertisements. I don't think so. So if one of those 500 is a Hare Krishna advertisement, what is the problem? What is the difficulty? That's a good point. I guess I just don't like the Hare Krishnas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I've heard that the Hare Krishnas say that you need milk. 
to develop some finer tissues in the brain to understand spiritual matters. But uh, I mean, I'm doing nice yoga right now and I'm a vegan and doing nice meditation. I don't feel like I need that milk to develop spiritually. I'm doing just fine. Okay. Is that a, is, is that a right? Yeah. Uh, okay, what about, well, so do, do you think that you need milk to advance? No. Ah, okay. Huh. Uh, so I guess that's just what I heard. Anyway, but you let, but it's, it's, it's like traditional, right, to offer milk to Krishna. Because Krishna wants it. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's what you guys do. You offer the milk. Yes. Well, well, what about all the cruel ways that milk is obtained? Man, they, they, they put the cows in the farm... And, the, and the, like, the You know what is the and... cruelest thing? That you yourself, you're going to die. Don't talk about that, man. I don't, <laughs> don't want to die. You yourself, you're going to die. Isn't that the cruelest thing ever? Yeah, why are you talking about it? So, the world is full of cruel things. Um, and uh, just picking one cruelty and ignoring all the other cruelties... This is lack of knowledge. So, I mean, what's your solution? Well, the solution is that um, we're not supposed to be in this world. This world is simply meant uh, to serve God, to serve Krishna. And the suffering is there because uh, of karma, the laws of karma. So we are also subjected to karma. That is why we have a material body that is uh, mortal. And we also, okay, we might not be slaughtered like the poor animals in the slaughterhouse, but we will also die at one point. And we should inquire then, what is the aim of this life? Because nobody wants to die. See, that is the whole uh, problem here, that the animals are being killed, right? Why should they be killed unnecessarily? But Ultimately, we're all going to be killed. We're all going to die at a certain point. So the question is, what is the aim of this life? If I'm going to die, whatever I accomplish, even if I accomplish, everyone goes vegan in the whole world. Let's say, let's take that hypothetical scenario. But we're all going to die. So what is the use of that accomplishment? Fighting for something that is impermanent. What is the value of that? If I'm eternal then I should concern myself with, with uh, things related to the eternity. Hmm. Okay, well, that's all right. You Hare Krishnas, you're concerned with the spiritual side of things. But no, 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 no. Everyone should be. Not the Hare Krishna. Everyone. Okay, well, let's say hypothetically everyone becomes a Hare Krishna. Yeah, now, wonderful. What about the material side of things? So then, then, then there will be no killing of the, of the uh, animals. There will be no killing of cows. So if the cow is not killed, then what is the what is the difficulty? If I take milk from the cow, what is the difficulty? Oh, Why are you objecting? Because the, the, the cow actually, um, she becomes anxious. If you don't milk the cow, uh, she can become sick and she can even die. No, that milk is made for the calf. That's made, they're made for her children. Yeah, you, but she also has an extra. What makes you say that? No, this is a fact. Hmm. You go to a farm, go and ask a farmer. So the, the cow's milk... And especially if the cow knows that she's um, in the hands of nice devotees who are not going to kill her, she gives more milk. Uh, double, triple, like that. That when Srila Prabhupada made the uh, New Vrindavan farm community, uh, the devotees were reporting that the cows are giving way much more milk than the other, the meat-eating um, farmers. So, uh, what is the harm if I take from, from a cow and I offer it? No one, is, no one is killed. The problem here is killing, right? Right. Well, cruelty. cruelty. Cruelty and killing. So, if the cows are treated properly, then what is the difficulty? Do mm. you have any objection? I guess not. Okay, well... I guess veganism, I guess I'm going to become a Hare Krishna now. I don't have any reason to be just a vegan and, and not a Hare Krishna and take and take nice milk prasadam. So, uh, okay, cool. Well, thank you very much, Prabhu, for clarifying my misconceptions. Uh, if you'd like to learn any more 
about uh, veganism, you know, not being, you know, uh, uh, really bona fide, I would say, comparable to the Hare Krishna, the Hare Krishna practice. Are no, you... it is bona fide. It uh-huh, is bona fide. Okay. Why is it? Everything is bona fide, provided the uh, uh, we understand the the context. Everything is bona fide, provided we understand the context. Everything, just like I said before, um, everything is the energy of Krishna. So if it's the if it's used that good idea for Krishna, then becomes bona fide also. Mm-hmm. So people want to stop the cruelty to the animals. This is a very noble cause. Uh, so if it's that noble cause is connected with this higher transcendental understanding, then it can be. Uh, very nice. Ah, so like the Hare Krishna is then like not sectarian. No. Everyone can like join. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yes. So invite all the uh, vegans. We invite vegan people. You come and join Krishna consciousness movement. <clears throat> okay, cool. And we have many preparations that do not contain milk. Hmm. So if there's a problem, someone doesn't want to take the milk for some reason or the other. Then he can ask, and we give him that prasadam preparation that doesn't contain any milk. We have fruit salad, we have um, different things. Cool, sir. Okay. Yeah. And actually, that is the uh, our experience. We've been preaching for many years, so sometimes uh, there are guests who are vegan, and they ask, "Please, can I have something?" They ask, "Is there a milk product?" And sometimes they also a little cheat. They say, "Oh." Okay, I can make an exception because this this is a, a pure humanity. Hmm. This is a pure food. It is done with love. Of course, things are not perfect, right? The, the you know there there are the slaughterhouses. Uh, the uh, the food that we purchase is from people who are very nonsense. Uh, the all these corporations and so on and so on. But we must start somewhere. And, you know, this spiritual understanding is absolutely um, essential. It should be the foundation that we should um, be concerned for the uh, soul and for God, for Krishna. Then everything else can be started from there. But if you start from the body, you know, just like I need the, like you said, uh, do we need the milk for the body, for the health? For this and for the health of the animals also that is also bodily conception of life because you care for the body of the animal but you don't understand that the animal has a soul um, then it will never uh, be successful such an endeavor because it's that endeavor pertains to that which is impermanent right the body is impermanent but you are eternal and the soul in the um, body of the animal is also eternal. So uh, the eternal soul can only be uh, satisfied by eternal solution. And that is Krishna consciousness. Well, how can a cow be involved with Krishna consciousness? Like, what, What's the Hare Krishna solution for the animals then? Well, you see a cow, but we don't see a cow. We see a, a spirit soul trapped in the body of a cow. That's okay, but then how do you get that spirit so benefited? Well, the, the cow is benefited uh, because uh, she gives the milk, and when the milk is offered to Krishna, then the cow is engaged in the service of God. Hmm. This is this is uh, unprecedented. It's really non-sectarian. That the animals even can uh, render service to God. The, have you ever seen a cow going to church? And praying there or uh, to a mosque. That's not possible. But in Krishna consciousness, even the animals can render service to, to God, to Krishna. And that is the real essence of religion. To serve God, not to talk, I am this, I am that, I am Muslim, I am this, I am vegan, I am... what? So many designations are there. But practically speaking, no one is serving God. So our Krishna Conscious Movement is propagating a very simple process, non-sectarian, 
uh, without any religion, without any uh, organization, organi they say organized religion, you can serve God immediately by offering your foodstuffs to Krishna. And of course, chanting Hare Krishna. Okay, wonderful. And people can learn that process by going and to the expandabliss.com website and picking up a copy of How to Offer Your Food to Krishna and many other nice ebooks there on the website, checking out the articles. You can also give us a donation on Patreon, Back to Vedanta Lives and Sound Society. Follow us on Expand the Bliss on Instagram and Twitter. And Back to Vedanta Lives and Sound Society on Facebook. Give us your emails, your criticism, your challenges, your feedback on uh, the email krishnabliss at outlook.com. And you can hear more from Dear Puruja Prabhu classes and the like on our YouTube channel, Living in, sorry, Expand the Bliss on YouTube, and have nice philosophy. We have some nice uh, series of videos called Kick on the Face, where we cover uh, varieties of topics like reincarnation, our scriptures like that on the Kick on the Face channel. So um, um, embry ancient embryology and the Srimad Bhagavatam, that's a, that is especially interesting video. It's a very, very Mac nice, yeah, Mac and Chopra really, really delivered on that video. So uh, I, I highly recommend uh, all of this content. Uh, so I think that's all we have for this episode of the Bliss Podcast. Uh, anything else you'd like to add, Prabhu? Jan Hare Krishna. Jai. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai, Srila Prabhupada. Okay, see you next time on the Bliss Podcast. What's going to be the next topic? Uh, I don't know, quite yet. It's usually like a spontaneous thing. But uh, everyone is welcome to send their feedback and we'll let you know. Or suggestion for a topic. Right, okay. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai.